You know, back on Monday, um, Alex did a video, I believe. It was on, yeah, it was on Monday. Because uh, he also did a raw review, a late night raw review that night. You know, giving his thoughts on what people were, you know, people were talking about when it came to raw. Um. Anyway, um, he did a live reaction video earlier that day to a video of basically called "Why AEW Sucks." And the video started out fine, in, in, in his opinion, it started out fine. You know, it, it was, you know, it's, it talked about, the person talked about a few things here and there. But then, when they started to get into the other reasons why AEW sucked, it just basically started to go downhill. Uh, from what Alex basically uh, described and you could see it in the video itself it just went completely you know downhill from you know where you know from where the potential was at the beginning to how it ended and Alex uh, gave his own you know basically his five points as to why AEW wasn't you know doing as well in these certain areas that you know they could potentially do well in um, once they get back on the road you know and stuff like that or even before that and you know Alex like I said he was he was okay with it at first the way the video began but then like I said you know as the video progressed it just got you know into a situation to where um, it just went downhill. It just became more like a, a bashing of AEW, more so than a, okay, here's why AEW sucks, you know, and he, these are my legit unbiased reasons or unbashed for, unbashing uh, reasons. And it just became more of a, you know, I hope, kind of, basically from what I could tell, it became more of a, oh, I hope AEW goes out of business kind of uh, video not saying that the person that did the video said that but basically that's how it kind of came off as you know if you if you watch it yourself or if you see how Alex reacted to it and one of the reasons why this obviously happened from what Alex can describe even though the guy uh, talked about it you know at the beginning and the fact that it got resolved was that AEW had given him, had given him a copyright strike? They had given him a copyright strike um, because of the fact that he used footage of theirs when he was doing a video or something. And you know, um, Alex had said that the same, and Alex, you know, pointed out that hey, the same thing happened to him. And, you know, one of the videos that he ha had with AEW footage uh, on one of his secondary channels, secondary third channels, well, one of his backup channels, I should say, you know, not only did it get struck down, the video, but the channel got struck down. And the same could be said for various times that WWE has, you know, copy stri copyrighted striked um, Alex, you know, when it comes to his mashups or some of his, you know, um, you know, some of his videos where he reacts or he talks about some of the holy blank moments, you know, in, you know, one, either companies, you know, uh, throughout the year, like 2020, 2019, or even this year, you know, Alex brought that up that, hey, it's happened to me too, and one of those times, you know, it, it was on a channel that I created, a new channel, and that channel got struck down, along with the video. Now, I, I hear all this, and, and I hear what Alex basically talked about, and how he f feels that this whole thing with this uh, guy, this person, that did the Why AEW Sucks video, you know, you know, basically, I heard what Alex, you know, had, to, you know, how he, what, what he had to say on how he truly feels about why he did it, and that's basically because he was upset that 
um, you know, AEW had given him, given him a strike, even though pretty much he had cleared that up. And again, like I said, Alex used for example that hey, it's happened to him too, so he understands, you know, where the guy's coming from. But you know, I hear all this. I hear all this, and it reminds me of the video I did about copyright. You see, not a lot of us like the whole copyright situation, whether it's here on YouTube, it's with Vimo, whether it's Daily Motion, BitChute, MetaCafe, wherever, even Facebook and Twitter. You know, none of us like it. You know, let's let's be honest. None of us like this whole copyright uh, situation. You know, we all feel that it's a bunch of BS. You know, that, you know, we have the right, the free will, if you will, the fair use, if you will, to do these videos without any problem here and there. Now, Alex did talk about the fact, I, I gotta go back and watch it, but I think he talked about the fact that it seems that, and I think the guy even that did the YAEW -E -E sucks video mention this it seems that the more you kind of talk positive about either WWE, AEW, Impact or whoever uh, the more likely kind of that you're potentially going to be able to do a you know a best of video or a botchamania video or a mashup video without any problems because not only would you be addressing the fact that, hey, I'm doing this under fair use, even putting, you know, the copyright fair use um, wording at the, bottom, at the bottom of the video in your description, but basically, you know, you'll be able to, you know, make some revenue as well because even if you have to share it, you know, share it with WWE or AEW or Impact or whoever because you're talking positive about them. You're not bashing them. And, you know, that might be true. That might be true in some cases. But if you take that and you put that aside, it doesn't matter whether or not it's true. You know, because there's a lot of companies out there, not just wrestling, but other sports as well, like Major League Baseball, NFL, NHL, NBA, you know. And I, and I think Alex listed some of these off as well. You know, but you got all that, you got a lot of the record labels, a lot of the movie studios, television studios, networks. You know, they're all gonna, you know, they all will come out and basically copyright strike you uh, no matter what. Or they will copyright claim you uh, no matter what, you know, uh, you present as a video. You know, like for me, one of the things I like to do at times, especially now during the summer break with my mom off, is do um, animated music videos. Those are the animated music videos, you know, confirmations of various shows and everything to a song. Whether it's a PMV, a pony music video, which is mainly an MLP G4 Friendship is Magic video or inspired video. Uh, whether it's a fan vid, like let's say Sonic the Hedgehog related, you know, you know, the, you know whatever it could be, you know, I like to do that kind of a video. I like to upload and share that kind of, you know, presentation. The the problem, the problem is 75% of the time, 75 to, the, what I'm trying to say is the problem is 75, 75% uh, 75 to 80% of the time, uh, that video will get copyright claimed. It doesn't mean it won't be viewable, it still will be. But 75% to 80% of the time, it will be copyright claimed and become ineligible for monetization. Well, monetization. So I won't be able to make money off it. Now, the other 25% to 30%, you know, on the other side of that, you know, I'll be able to potentially make money or I'll potentially have to share my revenue. You know, when it comes to my uh, P my PMVs or my AMVs or my animated music videos overall, I'll be able to do that because of the fact that either the song is looked at as a cover, 
or we're getting to a point to where they're realizing hey he's not he they they're not doing nothing wrong and you know you know they're giving us free publicity so let's kind of you know share the revenue with them or let them make a little revenue here on the side because it's not that big of a deal but again outside of that on the other side of that I should say you know the other 75 to 80 percent you know is basically you know basically on the positive side of what I'm trying to say and I'm sorry if I do stumble over my words it is early I just woke up up from resting for a couple of hours after doing my previous video earlier this morning uh, but like I said you know outside of that 25 to 30 percent you know chance of me keep you know making revenue sharing revenue as I mentioned that other 75 to 80 percent you know of the time outside of that is you know my videos are gonna get you know my animated music videos my PMBs whatever you want to call them you know they're gonna get claimed because you know as I said in one video and I'll say again you know despite how we feel about this whole copyright claim situation we're not the ones that made the videos we're not the ones that made well not the video we made the videos what I'm trying to say but we're not the ones that originally made uh, the content that we're using in that creation of ours we're not the ones that made the footage the original footage that we're using in our videos in our presentations we're not the ones that originally made the music we're providing you know as part of that presentation and because of that because of that these other entities whether it's wrestling promotion pro wrestling promotions MMA promotions, if it's major league, whether it's baseball, you know, leagues, basketball associations, football leagues, you know, you name it, you know, entertainment entities of, you know, record labels, music labels, if you will, you know, television and movie studio entities, network entities, you know, if we're using content from them, if we're using content from them, there's a good chance, 75% to 80% of the time, that they're going to copyright claim that video. And if they don't copyright claim it, they'll copyright strike it. Or, if they feel like it, not only will they claim it, um, if you will, but to show that, hey, you know, that, but to show, I guess, that, hey, they realized we didn't mean any harm, but we didn't get the permission, you know, to use it, they will block the video. They will block it. They will, they will block it from, you know, basically being seen. Which basically leaves us with other avenues to have to explore. And sometimes those other avenues will be the same way. You know, a lot of people are happy that BitChute is around, but who's to say they're not going down the same path that YouTube has gone down. Or the same path Vimo has gone down, or Daily Motion. You know... You know, it, it's just basically the reality of it is in the end is we have to realize that no matter what we say whether we say it's under fair use whether we say we're doing nothing wrong whether we put the description whether we put the fair use description in our video at the bottom of the screen or in our description box of that video here on YouTube you know that it's not always going to work that basically most of the time you know it's going to get claimed you know that video is going to get claimed that video is going to get struck that video if it's not struck but claimed could get most of the time blocked regionally if not worldwide you know this it, that's always going to happen no matter what the circumstance and you know I think when I hear with this guy the way this guy was bashing the AEW and I see Alex's reaction and then what Alex kind of said later that night uh, when I super chatted him and I kind of mentioned it um, you know it definitely sounds like this guy was very very bitter even though apparently he resolved the issue you know he was very bitter at AEW but I, but like I said this is just another lesson in realizing that even though we think we can get away with it we think hey we're doing the right thing we're you know putting out the disclaimer of 
fair use under the copyright law, it's not always going to matter. That basically we have to deal with the fact that, you know, you know, we, we just got to deal with the fact that even though we are, we're making a living or semi-living, you know, financially off our YouTube channels or any of our video outlets or podcast outlets or whatever, that, you know, this is, that basically, you know, despite that, that no matter whether or not we want to do a 100 best WWE moments or 100 best AEW moments of 2021 or, you know, a holy blank moments of WWE in 2020 or a holy blank moments of AEW in 2020 or 2021 or whatever the case may be, no matter how many how much we want to do that and we want to put the disclaimer of fair use under the copyright law, it's not going to matter. It's not going to matter. Be, it's not going to matter because of the fact that most of the time, you know, they might allow the videos to still be viewable, you know, because they see you using that, you know, that disclaimer, but still they'll say, yeah, you're using that disclaimer, but it's not, and we'll, we'll allow the video to still be seen, but you ain't making money off it. That money's coming to us. And again, I understand how frustrating that can be. You know, when I looked at the fact that I lost uh, I wouldn't say lost because I have the file saved on my computer, but when I saw that my Speed Me Up Sonic Stat AM uh, fan vid was blocked worldwide a year after uh, I had uploaded it, basically the month that the movie originally came out last year, you know, in select theaters as well as mostly at home, you know, when I saw that, when I saw that actually get blocked, um, um, even though it didn't affect my channel in any in, in any shape in any form in any shape or form, uh, even you know once I saw it get blocked, it's like I'm thinking, well, you know, because the first thing that went to my mind was, wait a minute, you know, if they wanted this blocked worldwide, why they didn't why didn't they do it originally in the first place, you know, when I first uploaded it, and you know it's because of the fact that over time. I think, you know, behind the scenes, not with YouTube, but with the entities of these entertainment labels, the entities of these sports associations and leagues, and these wrestling and MMA promotions, that over time, behind the scenes, the head people in charge, you know, get switched out, they get, re they get replaced. You know, the new board of directors, the new, you know, inner circles, if you will, uh, that are kind of like the head honchos and honchoettes, you know, of, of these leagues, the ones that you have to report to, the you know, the be-all, end-alls, you know, they might come around and say, you know what, you know, tell YouTube we want that video or we want this video, we want that and that and that and that, we want those blocked worldwide because, you know, even though, you know, they're not making money off it, they didn't get our permission, block them. Like they'll, like, they'll come up with a solution of, yeah, they can keep their channel, don't strike them down, but just take the video off. And there's nothing we can do about it. Because it's a call. We could just, you know, we can dispute it, and sometimes we'll be successful in that. But most of the time, it's going to be the call. And we just got to accept that. You know, one person I follow here on YouTube, as I've talked about before when mentioning this, is Angry Joe. Joe Vargas has several, said several times, even this year, that he does not like the copyright um, system that's going on. Saberspark has mentioned this as well. They both have kind of acknowledged the hypocrisy of the copyright system and, you know, you know, and, um, you know the algorithms, if you will, that places like YouTube, Daily Motion, Vimo, all of them have that are not pretty much, you know, set correctly in stone to make sure, you know, things are balanced out. You know, that, or oh, there's an understanding of, okay, this person is, you know, doing fair use, is utilizing fair use of copyright, so there's nothing wrong. You know, th these are people that have talked about this before, and 
because of the fact that they feel that the copyright algorithms, the system, and all that is broken. You know, because they feel that, hey, they're not doing anything wrong. Just like this guy that did the YAEW sucks video, you know, probably, you know, which, you know, it's probably the reason he did it, which is why Alex himself has come out and talked about it. It's most, you know, because it's affected him and some of his channels. Zara Nizrak of the Multimedia Chronicles has talked about it. The thing is, you know, you know, we can come out here and talk about it to a blue in the face. And sometimes when we dispute these claims, yes, we can be victorious. But a majority of the time, those claims are not going to, you know, get, um, you know, un, you know, are not going to get unclaimed. Those disputes that we make are not going to, you know, you know, go through all the way. They're going to go in one ear and out the other because pretty much the people that claim those any part of that video, whether it's because of the music or the visuals or whatever, and even if and even if you know for a silver lining they allow the video to remain, or for a silver lining they make sure your video your channel is okay, a hundred percent okay. You just lost this one video. You know it's the it's their call. They got first dibs. And there's nothing we can do about it. We just got to accept it. And like I said, when I see this video by this guy, and I see the reaction by Alex, following Alex for as long as I have, I can tell legitimately that, you know, Alex is on to this guy. And this is not to suck up to Alex or anything. This is a fact that this guy pretty much did a video where even though the copyright situation was resolved, he still felt angry and bitter towards AEW, and last month he did a video basically venting out his frustrations on it and why he believes it sucks, sucks, and basically pointing out all these reasons that I will admit there is some point to it. There are some points to it, but most of the times are un, you know, are basically very biasedly unbalanced uh, when he talks about them. So. Uh, but so yeah, you know that that's what I feel you know basically the, the reason this guy did it I agree with Alex and again it's not to kiss up to Alex But it's you know the fact that I think that's why this guy did that and why other people do something similar at times But let me know what your thoughts are. How do you feel about all this? How do you feel about people doing videos that bash thing uh, bash companies or promotions that might you know give them a copyright strike or a claim or whatever how do you feel about it? Comment down below. Let me know what your thoughts are on the live chat that um, is doing the premiere. And I will talk to you all later.